grandfather. And he was part of the pioneers of the time in the late 1800s. And then towards wow. three is when we started fabricating basically the very first cars in the world, you know, the likes of Ford, Chrysler, Cadillac in the U.S. And we were in Europe doing the same. 1903, we created a company called Race, which was the very first association for racing these cars. The first quarter of 2019, I was down in Miami just thinking, what can we do with our legacy or family history so that you have truly a real motorcycle that is energized or electrified? We just signed with McLaren USA to become our distributor for North America. So the price point that it's going to go to market now that we're going to a B2B model will be 80 to 100 grand. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. I am here today with our founder and chief editor, Bill Moore, and also our special guest, Marco Soriano from Soriano Motori. And he's coming to us from Europe. Where are you at today, Marco? I'm at the world famous Palazzo Brancaccio, which is located in Brown, right next, right next to the Colosseum. You are a very unique individual in that you're part of the Soriano family. And my understanding was over a hundred years ago, was it your great grandfather or great great grandfather? No, 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 grandfather, grandfather, uh, grandfather. Engineer, mechanical, electrical engineer, who basically, you know, as you know, it took us about a thousand years from battle horses to to cars, and he was part of the pioneers of the time in the late 1800s, and then towards wow, three is when we started fabricating basically the very first cars in the world. You know, the likes of. Ford, Chrysler, Cadillac in the U.S., and we were in Europe doing the same. So it's, we started with cars in the late 1800s? Yeah, 1893 were about the first designs that I've got records of for my family. Then 1903, we created a company called Race, R-A-C-E, which was the very first association for racing these cars because there was a sports motive behind it. And in mass production didn't start until like 1907, 1910, and so on. So the Soriano Pedroso, which was the car that we fabricated, was being made in the south of France, in Biarritz, and also in Paris at the time. That, that's amazing. And and so your your family made these, and they made them in different countries because they, they had to, because of the World War II, they had to move countries. And then we, just, were around, we were pushed around uh, because of the wars, both wars. Also, dictatorships happening during that time of, 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 of you know, the, the history in Europe. So we went from France down to Spain and back to Italy, to Switzerland and back to uh, to Italy now. But we're also living in the U.S. because my generation went there to be educated. Uh, and that's, that's really awesome. And so in what year did you start making? So you guys are completely transitional. You're no longer in internal combustion engine motorcycles. Yeah, so I saw the trend. So I was my train, my training in in banking, doing automotive because I come from an automotive family. It gave me an edge in advising other families. For example, in two thousand and five, we did the the M and A of Chrysler and Fiat, which a lot of people at the time thought it was the craziest thing that a company like Fiat and Chrysler would come together. Then we did the, we orchestrated a spin off of that in two thousand and nine, and twenty two billion dollars later, everybody's like, okay, this is a good move. Oh, today you got a public company like Estelantis, you know, right. Jeep, Chrysler, Fiat, Abarth, all the different brands that were part of that initiative that we, I was very young at the time too, that we did with a guy, uh, Sergio Marchione, the CEO of Ferrari SPA. All right. So I, I, I learned a great deal I, uh, from this man and the team, but also the background that I had with my family uh, allowed me to knock on doors and, and people would actually listen. To All right. So, Marco, tell us a little bit about Soriano Motors' uh, mission and vision. So, the vision started in 20, 2019. I think the fourth quarter of 2019, I was down in Miami just thinking, what can we do with our legacy or family history? Celebrating 121 years as of today kind of gave me some perspective of uh, reviving or rebirthing the brand and the pioneering mindset that we had at the time. And I kind of like to see things in a way that I can disrupt them. I like change, but also make things better. So having the narrative of having a historical brand behind me as a legacy of the family, as you may imagine, gave me, gave me a good challenge in the past. 
You know, I saw the likes of Elon Musk of what we what he did with Tesla, Lucid Motors, Lordstown, and all those different companies coming out of the work work. I really said, why not do this with our own family brand history, retell the story, and do it right, but start from scratch, right? Create an OEM, which is today the first OEM in Italy that is doing uh, uh, EVs with a great Italian design, great Italian engineering. Um, question. So um, most of that's coming, you're, you're manufacturing them in Italy. What, where are you getting your batteries from? What kind of batteries are you using? So the batteries, the circuitry, and the BMS, as well as the ECU are built in-house. So we have electronics and electric wow. engineers that are putting it all together. Yeah, the Chinese, uh, as you know, they're the ones that are well advanced in these technologies and they have been all calling me, we can do this for you, we can do this for you. So all I, I, all I do is buy the the cells that I buy from mm-hmm. Calb, A-L-B, and then we put them all together. We do basically everything from scratch. Did it on purpose that way. Now that it's a modular system and it's proven to have all the peculiars. So I had mentioned uh, earlier in a conversation with you privately that we have a gearbox system in the most. So I have here a gearbox double engines connected to a battery or BMS, so that you have truly a real motorcycle that is energized or electrified as as EVs go. So there's nothing like that. There's simply nothing. No. Nope. Like now, do you, and riding it, do you have to like a regular gas bike, sort of tap down to get through the different gears and then lift up with the, you know, that type of thing? Correct. Correct. The way it's built is like any other traditional motorcycle. You have on your right hand side brake systems in the front and on the back. And then on the left side with your left hand and your left foot, you, 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 you switch gears. Right. So it goes up to five gears and it regulates. Yeah, what was the advantage of that? Because nobody else that I know, and I've known the guys, literally the people that have been in this space since since the beginning, right? I mean, so so what was the what's the rationale for doing that as opposed to just relying on the the torque of the motor? Sure. So well, you've got the performance. You also have the we have added like the ABS system, so you can recharge batteries as you go. But you also have a larger autonomy or range. In the motorcycle. So this motorcycle, even though the space is limited from within, can go up to 150 miles, which is more than enough for it, a, a nice trip to go back and forth. And then also the sound. There is sound to this motorcycle that is its own sound. It's not a silent EV. And then we're working with technologies to even add more AI-based sound so they be more fun. Tell us what differentiates um, you guys. Number of things. Listen, anyone who knows motors or motorcycles can allocate a supplier, most likely China, because this is where all come. And all you got to do is put it together and right. hey, you have a motorcycle. Here, what I've done is create a brand new category. It's its own typology, it's its own type of motorcycle. Looking at it from the fork system, which is excavated from aluminum titanium, you can look at the very front of the motorcycle. Oh, nice. There is not a stereotypical standard industrialized telescopic system that, you know, is part of your suspension or shock system. So we adhere to this in order to maintain the DNA of what was created back in the day, 1930s, by my grandpa. But this bike has a lot of symmetries and a lot of identities from what he had created at the time, which was, you know, groundbreaking because there was no motor cycles. There were bicycles. But there was no motorcycle. So there was, you know, the beginning of this business. Ducati came later, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Piaggio Group, but you know, you name it. it. The only person that I can think of was Harley Davidson, which was a whole different development. Right. So it's a it's a creation of something new, very handcrafty, artisanal approach, and then you know the tradition meets innovation sort of uh, approach is what makes it really different. And you can see. From the line, but also it's all you feel it. Best hope. What, what? So we're at a very different price range on these, but in, in all fairness, I think you're in the 40,000s in the United States. Is that about right? 50,000? So it's more. So B2C, the B2C client who buys directly from the manufacturing plant will get that price. But as we're growing, and right now, 
very happy to say it. We were just signed with McLaren USA to become our distributor for North America. Oh, there you go. Oh, nice. All right. So the price point that it's going to go to market now that we're going to a B2B model will be 80 to 100 grand. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah. This, that's, a, that's a bespoke bike. All right. Exactly. Yeah. That sounds like a good arrangement. So for McLaren North dealerships America. will be pushing it? McLaren dealerships, Rolls Royce, Conning Seek. I mean, these guys are basically all over Canada and North, and North America. It just sank. So as of 2025, by the second quarter of the year and at the second quarter, you're going to see Serena motorbikes all over the states. And very, very happy. Now, I understand you're also looking at or doing electric bicycles as opposed to electric motorcycles. Is, are, is that true? Scooters. Bicycles. I'm projecting all sorts of. Okay. Stuff. Even 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 a car. Right now, I'm working with a, a large group. I can't say the name yet. Cause okay. Official, but we're working on a car concept. What I would like to do, what I and I can say this is, I like to bring back the 1926 car that we used to make, which is a classic Bugatti style car. <laughs> I can photo scan this car and and remake this, but I also create a modern car. So I like to. Bring to market the the old classic Soriano and the modern classic Soriano. Oh, cool! Yeah. And sell that for the for, you know two cars for the price of one. Obviously, the price tag on this is going to be very yeah. sexy. The black one that you see there is the one that I want to remake. Oh yeah, first that was a race car, right? It's a race car that we made for the very first competitions in Monaco for Le Mans. Oh, yes. I wanted to ask you: uh, Do you have any sustainability goals for the company? There's an ability in, them, in terms of an ESG framework. You know, first of all, listen, when it comes down to this, it's educating people and, and explaining to them what that actually means. You know, from an environmental perspective, the social impact on the amount of production that we're going to have is not really doing much of a difference. But I'll tell you this. And there a story that was told to me a long time ago about a you know a kid walking down the beach with his dad and he sees like all these sea stars just washed off on shore. And the child starts bringing, throwing them back into the sea. And the father just says to him, well, what the hell are you doing? They're not going to make it. Dip. And the child says, maybe not to all of them, but to the ones that I throw back in the water. And that's my attitude. You know, I may not be the giants of the industry, but as a small guy, I can influence the few. And I think that's enough for me to be happy about what social impact or investment impact we are. So when do you expect uh, your vehicles, your bikes are going to be available in the United States with McLaren? Going to go to Charlotte, North Carolina, just letting people know. Uh, we're looking at June, July, August deliveries. 2025. Okay. 2025. But we do have a couple of them out there and circulate in the United States. Uh, right now, it's in Dallas, Fort Worth, where we set up a shop or lab, and we're doing upgrades and exactly. study for the analysis. So. Dave and I live just a few miles off of Interstate 80. So if you're traveling from Chicago to Denver, well, think about having the trailer stop here briefly. You got it. You got it. Right now it's in Dallas Fort Worth, which I love because the the culture there, as you know, is very cowboyish, big uh-huh. hearts, big noise, and yeah. you know you look at an electric motorcycle and everybody stopped by and like, what the hell is that you bought here? <laughs> and they gave me some really great feedback, so that's always good. So. Uh, or people think that the batteries explode and, you know, all this other stuff. And it's like, well, some of them catch on fire. It's pretty hard to make one explode. Well, this is why I'm big on quality control. And this is one of the reasons that I'm doing this in Europe, because here controls, I quality control is extremely important, you know, and we internalize a lot of the procedures and the processes so that we can have eyes on everything that we can. All right, as much as possible. Part of the liability product insurance, as you and let's talk about that, because that could be extremely expensive. Yeah, it's that they understand that we have safety guards on everything that we're producing, and that they, when they do the underwriting of an insurance product for us, for every product that we have got, it is part of the conversation. It's one of the very first questions that I have. If my product was made in China, I would not even bring it to the United States at this point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love I love what you're doing, and I wish you the best. Like I said, I've seen many come and go, and some still struggling. And I want you to really be successful. And uh, yeah, Thank those you. are good. those are good looking bikes. Putting the word out through channels like yours helps a lot because you guys are doing a great service to 
to this revolution or evolution, as I call yeah. it. So thank you for having me. I'm very honored. And then uh, retelling the story, you know, telling just educating people. It's not just yeah. about the numbers, it's about the vision and the people behind it. Right. Yes. Yeah. All right. Anyways, we really do appreciate you being on. I'm going to go ahead and end the show Thanks. for today. Hi, I'm David with EB World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.